Electric pickup trucks are all the rage right now. Rivian is busy readying the R1T electric pickup for market. Ford and General Motors are both working on their own all-electric pickups. And of course, there's Tesla with its post-apocalyptic Cybertruck, a vehicle whose design I and many others criticised for being just a little too weird. But I've got to admit, in the world we now find ourselves in, well, it, it might be appropriate. But there are other companies working on their own electric vehicles and pickup trucks. One of them is Atlas, a small Arizona startup which, unlike many electric startups, says it's keen on building a vehicle that's a work truck first and foremost. You know, rather than be a high-end plaything for wealthy customers wanting something good looking to go off-road with at the weekend so that they can do their extreme outdoor sports. To date, we've really not had a whole lot to go on from Atlas other than the occasional rendering and video. But earlier this week, the company held the companion to the Investor Battery Day it held a few weeks back at its headquarters. Given the current health crisis and stay-at-home orders, it was certainly a lot less flashy than many automaker events. But in it, the single-camera livestream by Atlas CEO and founder Mark Hanschett told us a whole lot about the company's priorities in the electric vehicle world, as well as detail claims that the company has a battery technology that can recharge from empty to full in under 10 minutes. Atlas says it has the battery technology secret source tied down and that its technology is unlike anything that we've seen before. But is it that special? In explaining his company's goals, Hanschett said that Atlas originally set itself a goal of producing an electric vehicle that would be capable of offering today's pickup truck owners, specifically those who operate large fleets, down to self-employed people who use their very own pickup trucks for work, the ability to transition to an electric drivetrain without making any compromises over their current vehicle. The list of prerequisites to do this include being able to haul exactly the same kind of things as today's pickup trucks do, as well as refuel in 15 minutes or less from empty to 100% full. That's right, not the 20 to 80% that's usually quoted by manufacturers today. The logicality behind this is the idea that for both commercial and self-employed people, time is money and waiting to charge is impacting the amount of time you can actually be doing your job and thus earning money. The resulting truck from Atlas is something that's designed to be very modular in its construction with a variety of body and powertrain configurations. We haven't seen a whole lot of the truck itself other than the XT platform, which could make some of you argue very easily that this is all vaporware. But Atlas says we'll see more of its vehicles in the near future. To be fair, however, and to reiterate Hanschett from this video, Atlas's focus right now is not the vehicle, but the battery technology, which is where the focus on its virtual battery day presentation comes in. Laying out some of the challenges for today's lithium-ion batteries, Hanschett detailed some of the choices that his company has gone through to pick the right battery cell construction and chemistry, as well as some of the techniques that Atlas is proposing to allow for super, super fast battery charging. At the very simplest level, Atlas is focused on battery thermal management and mechanical structures within each cell. Because a heavy, powerful pickup truck which needs a heavy, powerful battery pack with a capability upwards in terms of capacity of 200 to 250 kilowatt hours, needs to be able to put power in and out of the battery very quickly. Hanschett said that current pouch cells and current cylindrical cells just won't cut it. That's because there are issues keeping the temperature constant throughout each battery cell, as well as physical challenges at the mechanical level that can lead to premature wearing and ultimate battery death explaining that cooling plates might cool part of the battery cell, but not all of it. Remember, cooling plates are used by many automakers today. Hanschett said that there's quite a large temperature differential, and that can cause problems and inefficiencies in the cell between one end of where the cooling plate is and the end where there isn't, as well as physical damage at the microscopic level that can ultimately lead to cell failure. To get around this, the company has developed a new type of prismatic design built with a Z-fold architecture. Think of it like a concertina-style battery design. But what makes it different is the fact that Atlas says it can pull power out from both sides of the battery simultaneously. It's not clear how that works, and Atlas isn't saying, but I presume it means that there is some kind of split cathode or split anode arrangement. 
The result is, however, that there's a claimed one degree Celsius difference between the temperature on the outside of the battery cell and the temperature in the very heart of it. This, says Atlas, allows it to get a huge amount of energy into the battery pack without causing it significant physical damage or causing it to heat up. And to avoid the problems with temperature changes due to outside weather and external sources, Atlas has designed its battery pack essentially within a cocoon. It's submerged and thermally isolated from the outside world in a special solution. While I didn't catch any specific temperature ranges for operation, it does seem that Atlas keeps its battery packs within a very narrow temperature range. And thanks to a comment from Hanchet, we know it's a higher temperature than most NCM, that's nickel cobalt manganese batteries used today. And yes, NCM is the cell chemistry that Atlas is currently working with. The reason apparently for this high temperature through the battery and a high temperature that gets kept consistent throughout usage and storage periods is that it reduces dendritic buildup between the electrodes. Dendritic buildup can cause problems with the battery, so reducing it can extend the life of the battery. While dendritic buildup still occurs in these cells, Atlas says it happens fast more slowly than it does for batteries on sale today. All of this comes back to the thermal management of the cell, which Atlas seems to be focusing on for its vehicles, as well as that enigmatic split cathode or anode design. And while you might think that this is something that's counter to what we've seen before, remember that Tesla and other automakers are now playing with new battery modes that are designed specifically to heat up battery cells prior to recharging, because the warmer the battery pack, the more quickly it can accept charge without damage which I think has got something to do with electron progression within the cell and lower cell internal resistances. The other thing worth noting here is the way in which Atlas is proposing its battery packs be built. Rather than use a single battery pack made up from bricks, which are in turn made up of groups of cells, similar to the series parallel style arrangement that Tesla uses in its battery packs, Atlas is going one step further, building multiple high voltage battery packs that can all independently charge and balance themselves and then transfer power between themselves on the go. This feels like Tesla's design philosophy on steroids and just like Tesla's battery pack design should mean that a battery pack lives a very unstressed life as each 400 volt pack is responsible for a fraction of the total power demands from the vehicle. But what isn't 100% clear though is how each of those 400 volt packs will be arranged because during the presentation there was talk of using 400 volt battery packs, 800 volt battery packs and 1.6 megavolt packs, presumably for different applications, all built from 400 volt modules. With each modular 400 volt pack having its own battery cooling and battery management system, it does seem however that Atlas is going for modularity here more than anything else. Which leads us to two really pressing questions. One, when are we going to see a demonstration of this technology? And two, when will we see Atlas vehicles hit the road? Right now we're being promised a tech demonstration within a few weeks. But what's really important to know about the second question is that Atlas seems to be setting itself up primarily as a technology engineering company rather than a traditional automaker. During the live stream, there were plenty of hints dropped as well as a focus on the Atlas XT platform to suggest that Atlas would rather have somebody else make the physical vehicle while focusing on developing this new super fast battery technology and then licensing it out. So there you have it. That's the Atlas presentation in a nutshell. I know we've been a little low on video for this one, which makes it a little dry, but we're readying some animations very soon to explain in more detail how batteries work in electric cars. So that will be a month or two because, you know, animations do take time. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon or feed our coffee habit with Kofi. Of course, you could also send the coffee money to your local healthcare professionals who are all working incredibly hard right now. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, stay safe, wash your hands and keep evolving.